The Truth as Told by Mason Buttle by Leslie Connor. Chapter 54, Caving In, pages 239 to 243. It is between bells when I get to the, to the school. Halls are quiet. I head for the swoof. Miss Blinney brings me right inside, makes me think she has been waiting for me. She calls down to the office. She tells them she is keeping Mason Buttle for the rest of the day. It won't be all that long. I am super late. Tell you why. So much has been going on at the crumble down this morning. Miss Blinney leans toward me. She says, Oh, Mason, I heard what happened to you last night. I say, You mean what happened to Calvin? I am not the one who got stuck in the hole. She says, Yes, but how hard for you, too. I'm sure it was a terrible night. And she is right about that. She says, but you have heard, right? Calvin is going to be all right. I nod when she says it, but this is when I find out how choked I am. I really can't speak to her. Might be Miss Blenny knows the feeling. She offers me the dragon. She logs me in. I tuck the tissues under the earphones. I make two potato fists and settle my forehead on them. Then I can talk. I tell this to the dragon. Oh boy. I am glad to be in this woof for this whole day, what is left of it, because I know there is a story and it is rolling through the school like a stink bomb. Everyone probably knows how I am the stupid kid who dug a dangerous hole and Calvin fell in it. Tell you what, I have to plug my ears. I am too tired for it. The right parts and the wrong parts, the way it goes when people are talking and telling. Anyway, so, um, I am tired because we searched in the night and I walked with Lieutenant Baird. So, um, we did find Calvin finally. That is the best thing. Still can't believe he was in the light shaft. That one we built in the root cellar. I can give that all up now because it is gone. The whole thing is. See, um, the town of Merrimack, well, they sent the building inspector over this morning, early, before I came to school late. And it was not good news what they said to Uncle Drum, I mean. It's okay because um, I know you cannot really get all good news in one day, and we needed good news about Calvin most of all. But the building inspector, well, he said, sorry. He said the root cellar was a condemnable hazard, is what? Big danger. The inside ceiling was near to collapse. They said we could have lost that boy in there, Calvin. So then the town, they sent the machine a pretty big one, a digger on one end and a payloader on the other. Uncle Drum and Grandma let me stay home for it. So I was there to see when they set that big claw down on the roof of the root cellar. Sure did take a bite there, like a dinosaur eats a meal. Ate the dirt first, then it got down to where there was a popping and a cracking, a breaking. Tell you what, less than one hour and they had dug away the whole top. They pushed it all into the cellar brambles, broken boards, and our sonotube. It is all piled right on top of where Calvin and I hung out. The man from the town said, the old foundation, um, the stone part, could stay. So we have two walls standing up out of the ground now. It looks weird, like they need something to go across the top of them. And they told Uncle Drum, they told Uncle Drum we better do that. Get some new boards, cap it for safety. Anyway, the inspector said those walls are remarkable and solid because things were built to last back in the time when the Buttle Farm was new. Well, so it was hard to see it come down and I guess I will have to tell Calvin our caves of Lasco got all crushed. Oh, but um, one thing is still there. On one of those good old stony walls, the aurochs, Looks like he is standing in old boards and dirt now. Can't see his feet. It's too bad, but he is in the open now, kind of like he is looking at the orchard. Feels best to think of it that way. I stop talking. I sit. Keep my head down on my fists. I'm still as a rock. Someone else will want to get on this dragon soon, I bet. But I don't move. Not yet. I think maybe I should tell the dragon one more thing. There's another thing that keeps coming back. 
the bad luck part. Like something dark that follows me. I worry. Seemed better for a bit, but, um, I think it might. I think it is still there. What if we don't, what if we didn't find Calvin? I can't help it. I think how we lost things. Bing, bang, boom. Scares me. I know I made a big mistake. I didn't give up the root cellar. Should have. Like the lieutenant said, a person should know. I feel stupid. I feel dangerous. Makes me scared to be me, the way that I am. Because what can you do about that? Nothing. I feel a hand on my back. Did I stop talking? How long? I think, uh-oh, Anna Lissetta Yang. I pop my head up, pull off the headset. I'm wrong. It is Miss Blinney. She whispers, sorry I startled you. Then she pulls a tissue off the side of my head. She points to the screen. She says, may I read? She is so kind the way she says it. I say, sure. Already, I can't remember what I was writing. Then I know. I have been asleep at the dragon. Just a while. Then I think I should not say yes about her reading, but it's too late. Miss Blinney reads fast. She is looking at me. It's that way that I know she is seeing more than just my eyeballs. She sees in. She says, she says, Oh, Mason, I'm so sorry. My jaw gets shivery. I try to stop it, but that makes it worse. Miss Blinney says, you know what happened? You learned something really important, that it's your job. That's your job as a kid. This crazy, awful experience is probably preparing you for a really great decision somewhere down the line, something no one even can guess about yet. She smiles. She says, how cool is that? I try to keep my jaw still, but it wants to shake and it aches. Miss Blinney reaches into her, the basket in her desk. The flat glitter rock, rocks with words on them. She holds one in her hand. She says, please, don't be afraid. Live your big life, Mason. You are not bad luck. You are not stupid or dangerous or any of those things. She hands me the rock. She says, this is you, loyal. You are a loyal friend.